What the hell are musicals? Hello, welcome to Musicals with Cheese. Today I am joined by Andrew, as always. Hey, that's me. All right, and we've got some follow up <laughs> from last week. Um, how do you think the reaction from our little Tony's video was? Oh, I thought it was phenomenal. You have a great fan base. They're all fantastic people. Wow, all of them are are just great. Yeah, they welcomed you in with open arms, which was surprising. Very surprising, because uh, most people in my life don't want to see me or hear my voice. So it's interesting that people in yours would. Yeah, I'm me included. Either way, um, this week we are tackling Stephen Sondheim's Sweeney Todd, as requested by YouTubers Mary Lou Choquette, Phantom Fanta, Michael Travis, Brenna Brodick, Theater Geek, and Melissa Goldman. Sweeney Todd! Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street, the new Stephen Sondheim Merrill Prince musical thriller starring Angela Lansbury. <laughs> And Glenn Perry. More hot ice. What happened then? Well, that's the play, and he wouldn't want us to give it away. Not Sweeney. Not Sweeney Todd. The demon barber of Fleet Street. <laughs> <laughs> so Sweeney Todd is a Broadway musical that opened in 1979, starring Len Carew, who I recently met, and Angela Lansbury. It was written by Hugh Wheeler and Stephen Sondheim, based on a play by Christopher Bond, and directed by Hal Prince. Upon its initial release, the play was not that well received, but has since grown into, like, populist popularity as a cult classic. Good job, good read. Yeah, yeah, that sounded perfect. That didn't sound rehearsed at all. Uh, it was rehearsed. Yeah, just read that off a page. Either you way, read it off the page. Andrew just recently watched the 1982 recording for PBS that had George Hearn and Angela Lansbury, as well as the Johnny Depp film. So I'm going to have him describe the plot for you. All right. So I recently watched this, and, and the main thing I got out of it is um, it's about a young sailor who falls in love and is cockblocked by a local asshole judge. Perfect. Perfect. We don't even end the podcast here. That's it. That's it. Uh, have a good day, folks. <laughs> Either way, um, the, the show is actually based around um, a man who is falsely imprisoned, who comes back to his town of London to find that his wife was raped and then supposedly poisoned. And then his daughter is under the protection of the person that put him in jail. And now he just wants to kill people until he gets his way. Everything sucks for that guy. Okay, well, why don't we start with the opening here? Mm -hmm. Attend the tale of Sweeney Todd. His skin was pale and his eye was hard. He shaved the faces of gentlemen who never thereafter were heard of again. Um, the show opens with a ballad sung by the entire cast and just explaining... Hey, we're about to see a show about Sweeney Todd. They break the fourth wall, and it's very theatrical, and they mostly go about describing the room that Sweeney Todd it lives in and how neat it is. I think it's a little cheesy, and I don't think... It's a it's a very controversial opinion I have that I don't like the first ballad of Sweeney Todd. It's a little bit uh, controversial opinion you have on this podcast that you, you dislike something because it's cheesy. Yeah, that, that that that's we don't even come anywhere close to that. <laughs> See, I I liked it because I thought uh, I thought it really captured the spirit of the entirety of of it because it's it's like an urban legend and it's not really taking itself too seriously, at least not in the the show. Uh, it's it's um it's more of a dark comedy, really. In a lot of ways. And I think that does set it up well, but and I think that it's just set up this the music is set up very well. Like instrumental wise, it is a gorgeous like song with the DAC ray played backwards. And the future ballads, like the one after My Friends and the one at the very end, are so powerful. But this one just seems a little pedestrian in a way. Especially in its descriptions. No, you gotta start somewhere. Uh, you'd give away the ending. 
You don't want to give away. He, he says it in there. You don't. You don't want to give it away. <laughs> yes, he does. But that's just my uh, like very controversial opinion at the top of the show, and I hopefully don't get much more controversial as we go. But then we're introduced after that to Todd getting into London with a fellow friend named Anthony who saved his life, and ain't much to say there. He runs into a beggar woman, and she sexually harasses him. And they're, she's not important at all. Not at all. Not even slightly. Either way, Todd leaves his sailor buddy and then goes back to where he once lives, where he finds a woman, his old college roommate, some some would say. And they sing another great song. Um, called Worst Pies in London, which is a piece of Sondheim's own, own rules of content dictating form. Mrs. Lovett is a chatterbox, so that informs the meter of the song which i think is basically how sondheim goes into every one of his songs he considers the character their actions their emotions and then writes a song around it instead of just writing a song and making the character fit into that i think that song especially is a really well written in the way that it keeps changing meters to kind of keep up as if it's it's almost like she's just talking it's a song though you know there's no like no place to breathe in that song either well, they do the um, the grunts, mm-hmm. kind of, which are interesting, and and probably the time where she breathes is the. Um, he, she eventually expounds on a story of how her old her old lady friend um was drugged and raped by a member of the clergy, and then he's angry because that was his wife. <laughs> and then she's like, "Well, if you, you're gonna be chilling here." buddy boy you best get your get your ass to work and she gives him his razors back and he's sings a song about coming back kicking ass and killing people all right can we just get into that this is your favorite song? my god this is my favorite song i love my friends my friends is like the ultimate um i want song without saying i want this <laughs> It's just he's singing about his knives, dude. You're looking too deep into it's it. It's not. It's a so- it's a love song between a man and his razors about murdering people. How many others? It's not a cliched like element. I, I don't know. I like the I like the um, aspect of Miss Lovett trying to put herself into the song, though. That's that's Andrew's favorite part. I'm your friend that's too, Mister Todd. The obliviousness of it. <laughs> she's not. She's not his friend too. <laughs> well. <laughs> That's the thing. Either way, we move on, and then we have a subplot where Anthony runs into a girl named Joanna who happens to be Sweeney Todd's daughter. Oh, boy. Ooh. Back to back. Now, here's your worst song as well, right? Right, right, right after Right next to each other. I go from my best song to my worst song. <laughs> Green Finch and Linnet Sir Bird is the worst song in this show, and I can just hear a thousand, a thousand sopranos screaming at me right now. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, no one cares what they think. Like, really. Don't say that. They're our fan base. Ah, uh, dime a dozen Sopranos. <laughs> but <laughs> this song is just piercing and unpleasant to listen to, unfortunately. And I feel like the metaphor of, I'm in a cage and you're in a cage, bird, so we're just alike, is really tried and trite. Forgive me. Trite. As cliche, even? And then we cut from that nonsense after the judge has his little buddy um, murder a bird. And we cut to Todd back to the <laughs> plot we care about. <laughs> okay, I actually really laughed when he killed the bird. That was really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm going to take this toy bird. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to twist its neck. It's like, come on. <laughs> it was threatening. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. I was, I was shaking in my boots. Then we cut to... Um, Todd threatening a poor Italian man trying t- to do his business, scamming people and beating a young deficient boy. And he challenges him to a shaving contest. <laughs> uh, yeah, Pirelli is really good. Uh, both of his songs are fun and funny. And he's a he's a good it's a good comedic relief character, I thought. OK, because a lot of people try to describe Pirelli as boring filler just to give Todd a mild antagonist in act one. Eh, he's funny. It's it's uh, and it shows that he's actually a good barber, and it's not just all fluff. Yeah, and it also gives a reason why people would come to him because he's like be the best barber in town in the shaving contest. Yeah, and it's like 
And it's totally not suspicious to anyone that the best barber in town is just moving into where this old old barber <laughs> is, used to be. It's been tw- got fifteen out of years. Town. No, no one remembers that long. No one, no one remembers. Even not even the judge that did it and currently has his daughter as a doesn't word. even oh, consider. Well, you know, doesn't even think of it. Oh, you mean that old barber place? You know, it's funny. There was another barber here. I took his daughter. And I raped, I raped his wife. <laughs> you know, no one wakes up in the morning thinking that they're the villain in their own story. Yeah, but he's not the, he, like, wouldn't he at least think like, oh, maybe it's the same person. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've been here before. A few days later, Pirelli comes in and he's like, hey, I recognize you. <laughs> yeah, he he's the only one. He's the only one. And he's like, I was, I worked for you once. And then. Uh, I'm going to blackmail you, so Todd immediately murders him. Uh, he also is the first kill. That's a horror a horror movie thing, whether it was the first kill. You know, the Drew Barrymore of unrelated to everything. Yeah, where it's unrelated to everything else, really. But not really, because it's it's still... Important. He's not, he's not connected with, like, the judge or anything. Either way, now Todd and Lovett's got a kid, and once you know it, um, the judge is popping in for a visit. Which leads to a great, uh, a great scene with uh, the, the pretty women song. Yes, it's a bass and a baritone singing a duet. Who would have thought we needed this? And it sounds wonderful. It's really good. Uh, it's a lot of emotion to it too, and I like, like it's if the it's your first time that... watching, like you're tense on the edge of your seat, seeing, thinking, we know he's slit a guy's throat before. Is he gonna do it? <laughs> Well, there's almost an aspect where, like, maybe he will do it because we don't, we don't even know much about the judge either. So it's like maybe he's not like the main. I villain. mean, yeah, we, really we do know. have an unreliable narrator, as we've seen, telling us all the shit that he's done, as opposed to like his side of the story. Either way, he doesn't kill him because at the last moment, um, Anthony, Mister Sailor Boy, dro- hops on in and without knocking, and spills out his entire plan while. And then Turpin gets angry and storms off. Todd gets angry and yells at the sailor. And then has his mental breakdown song. Which is good. Sont- it's a, a, Sondheim's it's really good at a good mental breakdown song. Look, that's the only type of song you need is mental breakdown songs. I mean, if you um, can construe it the right way, every song could be a mental breakdown song. It's it's not really a mental breakdown song so much as it is a uh, I'm the worst person ever now. I'm going to murder everyone. Uh, And this is where I can make a really good argument for Mrs. Lovett being the worst character in this film. I'm moral wise. She hears him say, I'm going to kill everyone indiscriminately. I don't care. And she's like, "Okay, what are we going to do with this dude's body? What is she? she, She's going to get in trouble. There's a dead body. And also she's low in meat for pies. So, I mean, then a genius idea pops into her head. (sighs) <sighs> and the part the the part of the show everyone actually knows about already at the uh, end of act one we finally get to the meat pie murders either way that's the end of act one now act two starts up with god that's good where everyone's eating the meat pies and it's really great and then a, well, that upbeat song about how much meat pies taste good flows into andrew's favorite song in the entire musical yes the reprise of uh joanna which the first one is good as well, but the reprise I think is better because I I like the um, inner inner flowing melodies and I really like the instrumentals in this version. And what do you it's think a, about like the meaning of the song altogether? I uh, don't even really care. It's pretty much <laughs> just about Todd saying, "Yeah, I don't miss my daughter as much as I used to, and it would be nice if I could kill her." <laughs> or the city's on fire. Yeah. Mischief. Uh, mischief, mischief, mischief. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mrs. Lovett, a couple of weeks later, reminisces on how great it would be if she were by the sea, living her life out. Her I Want song. Um, This one's good. It's funny. It's funny because... And charming. Like, it's a really charming song. It's funny because it, it's like, uh, she wants all these ridiculous things and she thinks she's going to get it with Todd, but Todd doesn't fucking care. Like, why would she want it with this guy out of everyone? <laughs> It's also, it's funny because he, he's, uh, his response is just, whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. And it's like, okay. <laughs> he's not even really listening. 
And then Anthony comes in. He's like, oh, I found Joanna. She's in a madhouse. And Todd's like, well, we're going to set you up as a Widmaker's apprentice. You're going to go in there. And you're going to shoot your way out. <laughs> Toby comes up to Mrs. Love and is like, hey, Toby. um, I've, I've been feeling odd about Mr. Todd. He's kind of a crazy, crazy lunatic. And he makes me feel I uncomfortable. Think- and she's like, oh, no, no, it's people. fine. And then he's like, you're literally holding the purse of my old person. She's like, oh, OK, why don't you go into the basement with me and I'll just keep you in there for a little bit. <laughs> and then Beetle just fucking walks into her house and just starts playing her partly singed organ. And he said, what a fine instrument. And he gets his own little number. I forget what it's even about. It's probably not about anything. And I think it actually is pointless. It's probably literally like uh, that character has like one song. So the person playing that is like, can I get another song? And they're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he dies and Toby's like, oh, shit. And then he hides under the floorboards. Meanwhile, Anthony and Joanna come in and they're like, yo, I'm going to keep you here for a couple minutes and I'll be back. And she's like, OK. And then she hears the beggar woman wander her crazy ass in there, not molesting people. Joanna hides and the beggar woman. Oh, my goodness. She's holding a baby up in the thing. Oh, God. She's Todd's wife. Yeah, except for I didn't catch it there. Then Todd runs in and slits her throat. And then the he doesn't have time. Judge comes in. And he reveals himself, and then he slits the judge's throat. And then he's about to go Good downstairs. Um, he remembers he's got to go take care of Toby. And uh-oh, Joanna hopped out, out the little shed. And then he slits her throat. I know he does, and he tries. And then, then Mrs. Lovett screams, and there's a siren, and she runs away. So he figures out that it was his wife the whole time. And he's like, hey, here you go. You're in the oven. Because now he cares, even though he would have killed his daughter like a second ago. Yep, um, not much foresight here. And then we have to attend the tale of Sweeney Todd. Instead of just coming and listen, we have to think about it. Think about what we Which just I, heard and attend our I tale like before that. we start revenging. Overall, how did you yeah. like the characters and the actors in that show, Andrew? I thought everything was pretty good. I think uh, I, I thought the Sweeney Todd, the person playing George Hearn. Went a, he went a little bit over the top sometimes, especially with the yelling. What about Angela Lansbury as Mrs. Lovett? Perfection. Very good. I think Angela Lansbury is like the epitome of that character because Mrs. Angela Lansbury is known for playing Murder, She Wrote, and she was in a couple Hitchcock films, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. She's known as being this grandmotherly, um, kind character, and seeing her in this despicable, horrible woman that doesn't care about anyone aside from her own needs truly is something terrifying. I thought it was great. <laughs> Overall, the Sweeney Todd musical, how would you rate that just all together, and what is your cheese rating? How cheesy is it? No, overall, it's very good. Uh, there's a ton of really great music in it. Uh, really well written music, uh, and I, that's what I really liked about it. Uh, the story is also epic. What I, what I will say is there are some aspects that are weak. Or I felt were weak. Uh, specifically, the villains weren't well developed. The love story between Anthony and Joanna is a bit empty. In terms of cheesiness, there are tons and tons of puns. Lots of puns, which really amps up the cheesiness level. Uh, Do you feel like the show was too long at any point? I think it could have been trimmed down a bit. But I find it weird of the things that are in the show, because Pirelli used to have a longer song segment where he pulled the tooth in it out of Toby's mouth, and it was a big, funnier moment, and it gives probably a little more time in the sun and then the judge had his own introductionary song and both of those ended up being cut in the original production and the version that you watched however in every iteration of sweeney todd from the school editions to the movie to this one there's a song entitled wait which is intact in every single one and it's literally just mrs lovett singing a song about we should put some flowers up you should wait before you take revenge and enjoy it. 
And it baffles me that that's something that Sondheim finds so important that it needs to be in every single incarnation. Maybe he just likes the song. I mean, yeah, but it doesn't really serve a purpose in the story. And even just like the small line patience enjoyed, revenge can't be taken in haste in Pretty Women is basically all we need. Maybe he likes how it goes. Maybe he just wanted to give Angela Lansbury another song. I don't care. I just find I it odd whole, that uh, that goes before giving all these other characters their proper introductions or their days in light. I think it is upsetting that child abuse was cut <laughs> since child abuse is so like funny. Overall, I think that the Sweeney Todd show is the most groundbreaking piece of musical theater that Sondheim's ever been a part of. I really think it is the only true horror musical that is capable of scaring an audience while being in the room with them. I think it is. There is nothing quite like it since then. And if anyone was trying to replicate it, it really would damage what was already in existence. Sweeney Todd is one of the best musicals ever written, in my opinion. All right, so that's all we have to talk about about the musical. Let's take a quick second, and then we're going to talk about the film. So in 2007, Tim Burton released his adaptation of the Sweeney Todd musical, and it starred Johnny Depp, Helena Bonham Carter, and Alan Rickman. Um, a lot of people try to describe this as one of the better musical to stage to screen adaptations, and I'm inclined to agree with it. I think it's a really great adaptation. While I do have a lot to say in its interpretation, I think it's effective. What do you think, Andrew? Definitely goes in its own direction, but it, it was still enjoyable to watch. Yeah, I think it's Tim Burton's best film, at least in the last 10 years. <laughs> I was actually, when I was watching it too, I was expecting to be a bit more Tim Burton-esque, but he, he kind of toned that down a little bit. I mean, bit. you still get everyone looking like a corpse, but the story comes yeah, but it's, first. It's There's not... no, like, nothing crammed in there, because you do get those elements in a Tim Burton film where you're like, why is this here? And he's kind of stuck with the story that Sondheim and Hal Prince and um, Christopher Bond and Hugh Wheeler gave him, so he's stuck to, like, the strict structure that they had that was perfection. He also doesn't have any, like, weird, like, twisty buildings or anything like that. Like, you kind of expect that kind of thing from Tim Burton, too. No, but it does have some pretty laughable PS2 CGI that hasn't aged as well. Yeah. Um, the opening sequence, I think, really has aged badly. I love the music, the instrumentation. Um, I think it's good that they cut the <laughs> ballad. Um, but they were originally going to have Christopher Lee and Anthony Stewart head do the ballad sang as ghosts that would stalk Todd and like be a little devil on his shoulder convincing him to kill people that would have been really stupid yeah it's a little stupid either way I would have loved to have a the audio stupid. recording of that with that <laughs> instrumentation that would have been great <laughs> yeah maybe maybe that would have been fun but uh the the concept in itself is awful. yeah so when in the adaptation from stage to screen tim burton cut a lot of songs out but he also took the songs that he left in and cut them in half and then kind of sewed them together to try to make it a shorter streamlined piece and i think that's a really effective way to do it that a lot of people don't consider when they're adapting stage to screen well the good thing is you don't lose all the songs like even if it's cut in half it's still kind of there mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, it definitely works. And, and you don't really feel like you're missing a whole ton of the whole musical. Like, even after watching the actual show, watching the adaptation, I didn't feel like I was watching something that was, like, missing huge parts of it. Now, I've got a question. Um, does it remove depth or does it stream like it more? Do you feel like the characters are equally as interesting on the film without as much time with them? Or do you think we could have used some more time with them? Um, well, it depends on which character. I feel like they put a big emphasis on Sweeney Todd and Miss Lovett that, like, even more so than the stage show mm -hmm. did, whereas they kind of ignored Anthony and, uh, Joanna a lot more in, in the movie. Like, they're just kind of cut out, as well as, the, as well as the, the beggar woman who is kind of completely cut out. Do you think that the beggar woman's twist was affected at all? Because I think it was diminished a little bit, but I think it kind of works as more of a shock with her diminished the way she is. 
I, I thought it was diminished too much. I think they really needed to have introduced her more. Uh, and also the fact that they don't even... She does not even interact with Sweeney Todd a single time before it's revealed. But doesn't that make it a little more the, heartbreaking when she, he's like, oh, I've never not, really saw you before? Not make really, it more because it, you, make more sense because I feel like that's something you'll accept on stage but wouldn't accept in a film. I feel like you lose the whole oh she was right under his nose the whole time if they've never even interacted. I guess that um, like in in the in the play it opens with them interacting so it's like oh right when he got to London she was already right there he just didn't even know. How do you feel about the um, flashback scenes? I th- I think they're effective and a very good visual way to tell the stories without just holding on their face the whole time. Yeah, no, I don't I don't like the flashbacks. It it makes it too uh, certain what his past is, whereas it, it kind of is more vague if it's just kind of told to you, especially with unreliable people telling it, like himself and Miss Lovett, who are both clearly untrustworthy with... <laughs> I feel like it kind of just turned Turpin into a mustache, mustache twirler a bit, because, like, he sends a little boy to hang by the neck till he's dead, and, like, oh my god, that's, like, cartoonishly yeah, that was evil. <laughs> yeah, and then he, there's also the scene with... Uh, the one scene they actually added with Antony was when he gets taken into the and house. And he shows him his ancient porn. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, what the what Then the beats the then, shit out of him. Yeah, that was the only scene they actually added with Anthony in it. I yeah, think. the only one. Because most of the other, most most of the scenes with him, they removed. But that one they added in, and it's just, literally just to make the, the villain more evil. But the thing is, was Turpin that evil in the musical? Do we, okay, I know people are going to say like, yeah, he raped her. But that is what we're told by Mrs. Lovett, who is... A renowned liar, as we know by the end of it. <laughs> a very good liar. There's only three bad things we see him do in the show. Um, yeah, he sends his daughter to uh, a, a madhouse. Yeah, maybe he just worried about her mental health. Um, he wants to marry her. He asks to marry her. He doesn't rape her or anything. He just asks for her hand, and he doesn't force it. And then the third one is... Yeah, he he has his little buddy kill a bird. <laughs> I mean, he's definitely not a good guy in in the. But no one wakes up play. believing like, "Hey, I'm gonna do some evil today." Everyone thinks they're the hero in their own story. He has a line in in the the movie that is literally just "Everyone deserves to hang" or something <laughs> like that. What man does and not? Like, what man has not? Isn't that isn't that Sweeney Todd's <laughs> thing? Like. Isn't he the the deranged murderer man? Yeah, but he's doing it through the through the law, and Todd's just vigilante justice. Except for not really, because he just kills yeah, everyone. everyone. <laughs> well, so does Turpin, though. So, but he doesn't. I mean, not in the yeah, play. Turpin's not that way. He's just kind of he's just kind of a bureaucrat who wants to marry his daughter. He's a little creepy, but he's not. From what we see him do, he is not. And horrible, horrible asshole. Well, actually, in the in the play version, he's almost he's almost like this just uh, naive old man kind of thing, where he doesn't understand why Joanna wouldn't want to go out with him, <laughs> wouldn't want to marry him. Basically, he's a doddering old man that just is like, hey, we're not blood related. Why wouldn't you marry me? Well, yeah, because he's like he's talking to his his Little buddy uh, henchman, like bragging about, oh, we're we're getting married, and it's like, but it's just. It's weird. She didn't want to go out with. She didn't want to marry me. And he's and he's just like, oh, you probably need a shave. <laughs> and it's like, this is the face of evil, I guess. But in in the movie, that conversation is turned into, oh, great job murdering that child. Yes, everyone needs to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Now, I've got a lot of opinions on the blood usage in the original show and the movie. Um, I personally feel that a lot of blood is important in the story because it is the catharsis. It is kind of Sweeney's emotions getting out in that form. And without the blood, you don't have that. And many productions like the 2005 production are bloodless. But the movie does tend to go a little overboard with the blood. It looks like something out of like Kill Bill. 
in some ways it's fun, but in other ways it's like t- it almost takes away from the tone a little bit. Because you're not even paying attention movie... to the lyrics of Joanna anymore. You're just kind of watching how like violent and how goofy they look when they fall down the chute. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, well, that's gruesome. <laughs> it's like comedically gruesome. <laughs> yeah, it, it goes from uh, it was kind of like really dark to like this odd, goofy comedy kind of thing, whereas the rest of the film kind of takes out the comedic right. elements. Right, um, because in, this, in the in. original show, the comedy comes from the character interactions from Mrs. Lovett and Todd, and that's all stripped away. And I feel like it's more frightened, like that removes their humanity from the characters, which makes it less frightening. Because if you see people who are laughing, joking, and normal human beings, but also doing these horrible things. It is terrifying, because it be, could be your aunt, it could be anyone on the street corner. But if it's just these two brooding Probably emo kids, aunt. they're like, well, they're, they're crazy. Well, I guess if I walked uh, in a pie shop and I see two, uh, two corpses <laughs> running it, maybe I shouldn't buy a pie there. <laughs> exactly. Like I feel like that that's one of the big losses from the translation. Like, you remember the scene in the Joanna song in the show where the father and his daughter comes in and Todd's just kind of like left there mugging a little. Yeah, he's almost like, oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's something you laugh at because it's a character thing. Like, you know, he's not going to fucking murder both of them. They actually they actually play that up as a as like a touching moment. Yeah, in the, in the and movie, that's, I'm not sure why I find that a little <laughs> less honest. Because isn't the song, it's like about how he doesn't even care yeah. anymore. And then and then they have this moment in it where it's like, oh, but it's a family, so he's not going to kill him. It's like, uh, what? <laughs> and that's another thing. Like, there's too many awe moments where they try to make Todd more sympathetic. Um, more, more sympathetic in a way that's dishonest to the original character. Um, after I saw the film all the way back in 2007, I saw a bunch of YouTube videos, really stupid YouTube videos, where they'd like animate Todd and love it together forever. Oh, and love, blah, 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 blah. They really romanticized that relationship. And before the movie, that relationship was never something romanticized because the actors never would allow it. Um, without a line of dialogue removed, but one scene added, they change the entire dynamic of the relationship and how people can interpret it. Um, there's a scene after By the Sea where Mrs. Lovett comes to Todd and is like, I brought you breakfast. And she's like, hey, do you even remember what your wife looks like? And he's like, yeah, she had yellow hair. And she's like, you and I could have a good life, you know. It probably wouldn't be as perfect as I described or as great as you remember, but we would get by. And he turns around and he gives her a face like, um, yeah, you're right. That, that might work out. And that is when the shippers came out. <laughs> well, these characters can't be shipped together because Todd doesn't yes, like he, her. Yes, in the original show that conversation would have ended with him just walking away. <laughs> he probably just wouldn't have even said anything at all. Just not even... I think it also doesn't help that the portrayal of this song... Uh, oh, you don't like By the Sea? ...is so upbeat. Uh, the portrayal of it, the the way they did the... It's like the, the montage Pastels. of... Oh, they're happy. They're happy life. And... and uh, uh, there's one there's one part where they're getting married and uh, Todd kind of reluctantly gives her a kiss. He also puts his hand on her but knee that, later. Like, yeah, and it's like mm, not, you're kind of implying that he's going along with this. Well, in in the show, the dynamic really is she loves him, kind of, kind of, and he doesn't fucking care at all. Like, he is literally just, she doesn't exist. But what do you think of the cast altogether? Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter and all that. Uh, Johnny Depp's okay. I think he slips into uh, Jack Sparrow a few times, and that's really, really takes you out of it when that happens. But when he's not doing that, it's okay. He does look too much like Edward Scissorhands, though, and they're both barbers, so... And, eh. um, I think that Johnny Depp does a serviceable <laughs> job. He he deserved the Oscar nomination he got for this. And I think he really does he play some well. key moments spectacularly, like Epiphany and My Friends. But then there's other moments where he's just kind of like dead weight in the scene. <laughs> Who doesn't sound as okay, in my opinion, is Helena Bonham Carter. 
She's Go got, on. like, as I described before, Worst Pies in London is written with this chatterbox nature um, in a metric that's designed for her to be constantly talking, constantly doing a thousand things at once. And Helena Bonham Carter has this really, really quiet, really nice oh, voice that sounds like a frightened dove. And... It doesn't suit the character of Mrs. Lovett. And as well, there's a couple key moments that I think that she really betrayed what the character originally was, which was a callous woman that didn't care about anyone aside from her own personal needs. Um, take when Toby comes to her and says she has to lock him in the basement to be murdered eventually. Helena Bonham Carter plays it with tears in her eyes as she runs up, while Angela Lansbury's like, whatever, bye! And she is clearly, at several points in the film, she sees Toby as her son, essentially, which really didn't seem to be an aspect of the play at all. It's just to add, like, doh in the cute moments to a film and story that shouldn't be I think cutesy. They, were, they may have just been trying to make the two main likeable. characters a little more likable for a audience. And I think... Part of the reason they had to do that was just because the two actually likable characters got all their screen, screen time kind of stripped away. For, for the better. That's all we have to say about the Sweeney Todd movie. Um, What's your overall opinion on it, Andrew? Uh, I think it's a good adaptation. I don't like a lot of the changes, but none of them are like so bad that it's like, oh, you don't watch this version at all. Uh, it's certainly a good a good version to watch. If you want to watch something with friends who maybe aren't so into musicals or uh, you're trying to get somebody into them, that's a good adaptation to watch probably because it's it's more of just like a traditional horror movie in a way because it's not. Um, I would agree that it is a very great adaptation of a very popular musical and I think all the changes are things that are good in the adaptation process there are some things that are a little off and some things that haven't aged well but overall i do think this is one of the best um stage to screen adaptations there are and i think it really is an effective film altogether Agreed. Uh, i would give it some mozzarella out of six. Oh, he's given the mozzarella <laughs> ratings now all right so Thank you guys for watching. We have another sh vote for next week. Please do leave comments and let us know what you have to say. And please to let us know which one of these three musicals you would like us to talk about in next week's podcast. They're all related under the theme of rock and roll. So we got Hedwig and the Angry Inch, Rent, and Jesus Christ Superstar. Post in the comments what you thought you liked, what you didn't like, what you agreed with, what you disagreed with. And make sure you do a vote on which of those three you'd like for us to review. Thank you very much for watching. Andrew, do you have anything more to say? Um, just if anyone disagrees with me, don't comment it because I get I'm really sensitive. I get upset. Um, so just, you know, if you disagree with Jess, be very. In fact, insult me, just berate me. But don't don't bring up him. Don't please don't bring me up. I'm very sensitive. All right. Thank you guys for watching. This was Musicals with Cheese and we'll see you next week. Uh -huh.